Hi everyone, I'm Mike, I'm from Math World. Uh, we are uh, on the other side of this floor, the glass hallway that we have over here with computers and desks, uh, math office, from room 102. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's my help. Probably reiterate what he said as I go through some of it, but thank you. That's my help. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, um, I changed my sound to try to capture him, but I ended up putting it off. <laughs> but when we go through the syllabus, I'm going to kind of repeat what he said anyway, so you'll hear it again. Okay. Um, before I start, though, I do need to change this camera here. So I don't want to be This is. Okay, there we go. So. Okay. Um. I know every single one of you guys is face to face. I've had all of you in my class before. Um, but there are new people that I do not know in the remote. And then there's also going to be some people in the online version of this class. So I kind of need to mention what's going on. Not everyone recognized that when they signed up for the class that this was one of those, um, what do they call They call them three in one or cross listed courses in our department. And so essentially what it is, is that each class usually contains about 30 students maximum, and they've broken up the enrollment into this class into three pieces. So there's a face-to-face -face portion of this class, which is all of you guys, and there's 10 max that are allowed in the face-to-face -face version. Then there's also the remote version, which those of you that are watching in Zoom, you are part of the remote section. So the face-to-face -face section, you're gonna to need to remember these numbers because I will use them to reference different groups, okay? So the face-to-face -face section is section 14, okay? So you guys in the classroom, it's section 14. Those of you that are in Zoom, you're in section 15. And there's also gonna be another 10 students that are purely online only, okay? And those students are going to be section 18. So as you're going through Canvas, if you see something that says online section 18 only, that does not refer to you. Okay, You don't need to worry about looking at it. You don't need to work mess with it if you're a remote student. 
or a face-to-face -to -face do. Similarly, I think in Canvas, I had at the top remote Zoom meet, right? But it says section 15 only. So those are only for those that are enrolled in section 15. Um, if you're not sure which section you're enrolled in, you want to make sure um, that you're looking at your ACEs schedule. Okay, so it'll say 2414 as the math class, and then next to it, it'll have three digits for your section number. So it'll be 018 if you're online, 015 if you're remote, and then 014 if you're face to face. So all of you that were in the face to face are all here. Um, I will check the attendance for the remote students um, when I go look back at the logs. I mean, there's only five of you in here right now, and there's supposed to be none. So I'll kind of figure out where the other people are. They might have been confused. So I'm recording this video and everything that we do in class will always be recorded and it'll always be posted in Canvas and it's for everyone to review. So if a face-to-face -face person happens to be absent or late, they can go watch the recording and catch what they missed. If a Zoom student isn't able to log into Zoom on time, they can watch the video and catch it. And then the online people is just an extra resource for the online students. Normally in the past, I would only do my lecture videos and then um, and then have the homework sections, right? But for this semester, the online students get this extra resource that they get the class recordings of the face-to-face -face classes, okay? Um, so it's gonna be a little bit weird on the technical side. You've already seen us fidgeting. These cameras are new and there's like three of, there's two cameras, the projector, a bunch of apps that I need to get used to. And they just put it in here and they had tried to do a training on Friday, but it was like, oh, look, you could do this, you could do that, you could do this, you could do that, but how do I do this, this and that, right? So <laughs> I still have to practice with it. Um, Fridays are gonna be the days where I can actually come in here and actually practice with it because there's classes in here all throughout the week. So I won't be able to actually like master it until on Friday, okay? So we're just gonna have to bear with it <laughs> for this, this class period and then the next class period. And then after that, I should be able to do a little bit more. Okay. Um, I do need to go over the syllabus just because there is quite a bit. Um, it's saying I can't minimize. Okay, well, I'm just going to share my screen. And those of you that are in remote, if you have questions, just come off of you and ask them. You don't have to worry about um, interrupting or anything like that, that's what we need to do in order to get um, a question answered. And those of you who in person, again, same thing, if you need to ask questions, just ask it. Um, so I'm going to go to Canvas. This is one class with three sections, okay? I'm only getting paid to teach one class, even though all the students are doing it differently, okay? Because of that, last semester I tried to do a three in one. We were there. I tried to do a three in one class. And it was a nightmare because I had three different Canvas classes and I'm having to do three different things the whole semester away. And I had that conversation with my chair and I was like, hey, I'm not getting paid to do this for three different classes. You're paying me for one class. So something needs to give because I can't do a three in one if you're not going to pay me to teach three different classes. So the solution that they came up with was to meld them all together, to merge them together, okay? So it's gonna be a little confusing at the beginning until you get your section numbers down in your head. Once you know your section numbers in your head and you're watching these videos or you're attending class in person or in Zoom, it'll start to make sense as we go through, okay? You'll know what you need to do versus what another student needs to do, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, but <laughs> I don't have to do stuff in three different places. So you will see your Canvas class. You do see this. Does anybody know what this picture is of? Anybody know? Coral. It's not coral. It's edible. It's not a fruit. Who guesses though? It's called Romanesco and it's like broccoli. Okay. <laughs> but it actually has what's called the Fibonacci sequence and how it grows and how it kind of spikes out and spirals and all that. And I kind of have full pictures. I used a bunch of like math and picture photos. They're pretty interesting. <laughs> I'm a math nerd, so like, of course I love it, but I kind of use those in my thing. So there's an announcement here. It talks about this orientation and how the students need to go through all of this stuff. 
Again, that's for the online students only, okay? So if you're an online student watching the recording, make sure you read that announcement, make sure you complete everything that's in that uh, description in there. This link right here is only for those that are in section 15, the remote students. So every day that you guys in person come to class, the remote students will be clicking on that link to come in the class. If for some reason you, you know, your car's not running that morning or anything like that, and you're not gonna be able to physically make it in person, you can click on the Zoom link and you'll be able to join us just like everyone else. Okay. So use it as an emergency situation, but it is there and available. Okay. Um, same thing with the online students. If they happen to be available from 12 to 150, I highly doubt it. That's why they signed up for online, right? <laughs> but if they are, they wanted to come in and join us, they could. Um, but it is an option. And so these are going to be interesting. Anything that has a page, everyone in all three course sections are going to need to do to look at it. Okay. So there is a tech support page in case you need to work on, um, have any questions about Canvas or ACES or anything like that. There's a bunch of things to get tech support for those things. Um, you definitely want to update your personal settings for Canvas so that when I make changes or update something, you get a notification that it happened. Um, and then this one's a general student resources page. So it's got like the testing centers, how to borrow calculators, the department information. I mean, absolutely everything, financial aid links. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay? It's just for you to have a reference. Okay? This module will always be there. It'll kind of get pushed to the bottom as we continue, but you could always scroll down and come back to it if you needed to get some of those resources. Okay? Um, this one is going to be the one that's super important. Now, all this is locked. So you do have to click on this page and then you have to click next until you get um, to that quiz. So update tells you how to update. So you see lots and lots of links. If you do have um, a learning disability or you're not sure if you have a learning disability, but maybe you know like you always need extra time when you're taking your test, test time just runs out way too soon. Um, you may want to go get tested from the disability services because they do allow test accommodations where you can get like one and a half times the normal test time. Okay. So it's there in case anybody needs it. It is not retroactive. I'll talk about that in the syllabus, um, meaning that if you take test one and then you give me the letter of accommodation before test two, I can't let you go back and get extra time on test one. You only need starts from the second you give me that paper. But in here, I definitely need you to go to this quiz. I can't take it as an instructor, but I'm going to look at it. You just watch a little video to figure out what Remind is. For all of you in my face-to-face, y'all know what Remind is. And some of you that are in remote, y'all may have had me in previous semesters. Um, you definitely want to sign up for the Remind. Make sure that you're using your cell phone number. It defeats the purpose if you put in an email. Because I'm going to email you everything today, but I'm also going to text message. Okay. And so the text message is going to be for an emergency purposes. Like if I need you guys to do something right away or something has happened and I'm going to be late or I'm not going to be there or I mean, anything, there's lots and lots of reasons why I would need to be able to text you. Okay. Um, but it is through a third party, this remind app. So I don't know your cell phone number. You don't know my cell phone number, right? So there's no breach of privacy there. Um, but just click this and then you type in your information and we'll let you sign. And then make sure you click that little box once you've joined and then you just submit the quiz. Okay. Um, but everyone does have to sign up for that. That way I have a quick way to communicate with you. Also, when you have questions, when you're doing your homework, for you in the face to face class, we'll probably be doing homework in class. Um, so you could probably get all your questions answered while we're in class. But for some of the remote students or even the online students, if they come up with questions while we're not in class, um, you can text me and that's gonna be the fastest way that I reply, okay? Because if you email me, you have to wait until I go check my email, right? Okay? But if you text me, it, it beeps right on my phone right away and I can answer. Okay? Um, this is not for everyone, this Canvas overview. If you notice down here at the bottom, it's only assigned to the, cal the section 18. So for you guys on the face-to-face -face in your Zoom, you wouldn't even see it in that module. You will not see this assignment at all in the module. It's just gonna be missing, okay? The only people that are gonna see this assignment is the online students. 
because they need to take this online class. Most of them already did, but there's like a couple of people that still need to do it. Um, this is going to be our schedule. Now, it looks heavy for week one, but all we're doing today is just going over what to expect. So no math just yet, but <laughs> on Thursday, we're gonna hit the ground running, okay? Because these are three sections that we actually covered in Cal 1. And most of you that are in here, I've just had you for Cal 1, right, in the last semester. Um, some of you that are in the remote iPad as well. Um, not everyone, though. So we should know what's in here. And so those three sections, we're just going to cover them real quick. Okay, We have the whole, like, almost two hours, right, to cover it. So we're going to go through those, just kind of uh, familiarize yourself with what's going on in there. Um, and then you can start working on your web assignment assignments. And then this is kind of the calendar that we're going to follow throughout the rest of the semester. If I ever have to push anything back, I will let you know. Um, just to FYI, I will not be here on this day. Um, I'm getting myself and my daughter are getting some dental work done, so I'm just not going to be able to make it. Um, but I do have notes already prepared for a sub and um again you guys will be working the work assignment as well most of the class period. Okay. And that's also one of the sections that we cover. It's the nicest, shortest, simplest, sweetest one <laughs> out of all the 5.1 to 5.4. So it should be a nice class period. I don't want to put too much in that day that I will be gone. So I just put it real simple. Um but that will be one day where I will not be here. I plan I don't have any other appointments scheduled during class time throughout the rest of the semester, so it should be good for the rest. Okay. Um, let me click next. This is a readiness quiz. Now, I'm going to ask real quick, those of you that are in Zoom, I'm going to ask you guys as well. So if you can find your little notifications um, icon in Zoom, um, where is it at? I think it says the word says more, and then it has reactions. And you can give me like a thumbs up or a thumbs down, okay? The question is, is how many of you have a laptop, a personal laptop, or even one that you borrowed from the campus, but you have a laptop or a desktop computer at home? Anybody? So you guys, you do too? What about, and you're on something right now, so you're good. And then you have one right now, too. Not that. Yes, the thumbs up. What about real virtual or quality? I haven't seen you guys' reactions yet. Let me know. Everybody else has thumbs up, so appreciate that. Um, but oh, it's not totally quiz story, but it's Jose. <laughs> okay, Roberto has a thumbs up. What about Jose? No, oh, there is a story. Where is that? I didn't get okay. All thumbs up. Yes, perfect. This class has so much content. Tried to mention that to you guys in the Cal 1 class last semester that you know the number of sections that we covered in Cal 1 versus the number of sections that we have to cover in Cal 2, it's a ridiculous amount. Okay, we are not going to have time to do tests in class, it's just not going to happen. Okay, I tried to do it last semester and I had to make them go online because. There just wasn't enough time to cover all those sections in class. And I really felt like I was rushing toward the end just to kind of squeeze everything in. So had I not tried to do in-person tests, <laughs> I probably would have not had to rush toward the end. Okay? Um, so I'm just trying to set everything up straight this go round. Okay? So because of that, everyone is assigned this Respondus Monitor Acknowledgement Quiz. It basically explains to you how you'll go about taking the, the quiz and you'll even get a practice version, okay? Um, so I'm gonna let you do the practice run in this orientation module. So you just go through this, you answer the three little questions and then you'll be able to move on. Um, yes, okay, so, okay. Um, yeah, if you don't have a webcam, you'll definitely need to um, get a loaner uh, laptop from the campus. And there's information, I'll show you where it is when we get to it, but there's information on that as well. Then if you already have taken a test on your computer, you should already have the Lockdown Browser app. 
But if you haven't, make sure that you click here and you um, download that lockdown browser, okay? It's like any other normal browser, like Safari, Chrome, Firefox, all those guys, right? You That's how you open the internet and then you just type in the address bar. Um, the lockdown browser is exactly the same. It's just intended for um, testing. So it locks your browser. So once you open that and you start your test, you can't navigate outside that browser. So it's supposed to prevent cheating because if you're using Chrome, you can have the test in one window and then some website on another window, right? And so the lockdown browser is supposed to prevent that sort of thing. Okay. But it's just like a regular browser. So when you're ready to take your test, you open Canvas in that browser and then you navigate to the test and then you start. Again, we're going to have a practice run. <laughs> So here is the syllabus. I had the wrong ones. So somebody's already commented. <laughs> um, I had copied a bunch of stuff from my pre cal class and we have the pre cal uh, syllabus in here, but I did fix it. So we're going to go over this. I always tell people that the syllabus is kind of like our contract, right? It's like my promises of what I'm going to do and your promise, well, not your promises, but kind of like your, the expectations that I have of you guys, okay? So like in there, it tells you that I'm going to be posting grades, and giving you feedback on your tests and things like that within 10 days. And so you can expect that from me. You're not going to have the situation where I take a whole month to give you back your test results. Okay. Um, that does happen, unfortunately, in some departments, but I'm not one of those people. And in here is my promise that I'm not one of those people, right? It tells you I will give you your stuff back within 10 days. Um, I usually try to give it back with the next class period, but sometimes it takes me like the next class period to get it back to you. Okay. Um, but I definitely try my best to get it back ASAP so that you could take that feedback and then keep moving forward. Okay. Um forgot my train of thought. Dang it. Oh yes, and another promise is my response to emails and texts. So texts I usually respond right away. And never ever did it take me more than 12 hours to respond to a text or an email. Um, if it does, just send me another message, just like a reminder, but hey, did you see that email that I sent you at such and such time? Because that's not normal. I must have just lost it in the sea of emails that I got that day. Okay. So definitely um, touch back if I don't respond to you within 12 hours. Right? Um, so this is the, the, this is so weird. This is the syllabus for section 14, but it doesn't matter. I literally copied and pasted all the syllabus is the same. Okay, so when I go through this, it's the same exact thing for all the syllabuses. So I don't want the remote students or the online students to freak out because it says face-to-face -face right here. <laughs> it's not that everyone is face-to-face, -face, okay? Each section is going to be different. So I kind of outlined that here. So section 14 is going to be the face-to-face. -face. So we meet at 12 to 115 or 1210 to 150, and I didn't put what room, but it is in 118, I found it, so you're good. Um, and then the remote, you guys will have a Zoom link. I kind of showed it to you in Canvas earlier. And then the online students are not going to meet at a specific day or specific time. So um, they will just have access to the recording. And so we need those. Well, I'm gonna kind of skim through this stuff. So Again, the same thing. If you have learning disabilities, oh, our pregnant guys, I guess it's such a separate situation. But anything, <laughs> let me know. I have had a student have baby like right in the middle of school. So just let me know what's going on. We can work around it. Okay. Um, I do have office hours during the day this go round, and for us, it's pretty nice because it's right before this class and then right after this class. So I'll be here right before class and right after, okay? Um, I'll just be in my office, which is 108L. And for this room, it's literally on the other side of this wall in that little hallway there, okay? Um, but that's where I would be during all of these times, okay? We also have Math World, which I'll show you that information in a little bit. And these new syllabuses, they're new, we just have Math Words, now it's this simple syllabus stuff. So they have like my education <laughs> and my work experience and all this good stuff. And I don't know if anybody knew, but I did start off like a good teacher. Um, when I got my bachelor's, I became a tutor. And then once I got my master's, I started teaching classes. And then eventually I became full-time. And then eventually I got tenure. Um, so I've been working my way 
Although now I might just be getting a switch for her class. So I, I, I told you guys right in the past, like my boyfriend worked with that filler. And he's like, dude, we need <laughs> people that know math over here. And I'm like, hmm, double payments. Like, that <laughs> sounds real good, but I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like what I do too. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Um, this is the department information. So like, if you ever have complaints about me, <laughs> this is who you would contact. Like, who said that, right? Um, but that's who you would contact, okay? Normally, if I'm going to do anything that I feel is like edgy, like, well, Susan's not going to like if I do this, but can I do it? I usually get her permission first. So good luck trying to contact her afterward <laughs> because she's already probably approved whatever it is I'm doing anyway. But if it's something more serious, um, you definitely have that channel to go talk to her. You just need to click this little link and you can set an appointment. Okay. So that's where you go if you have any issues whatsoever with any math class. And it could be my math class. It could be you're talking to a tutor and they were being really rude to you for some reason, which they're usually all friendly, but if that happens, you have someone to contact. Right? Um, and they, she is all of our supervisors, so she is the person. Um, this is the textbook that we're using. It should be the same as your Cal 1, or if you're repeating Cal 2, it's the same. The books have not changed. Right? Um, Here's just some information. We'll talk about how to get into there in the face-to-face -face class. And then the remote classes, you guys are kind of going to do with the online people are going to do. And I have some directions on how to get in. Okay? Um, so we'll get to that when we get there. And I really apologize. I'm trying to go through some of this, but it's super, super long. And I recorded myself doing it twice last night. I didn't leave her for like 10, 30 minutes. Um, it's me like an hour and a half to record one. Trying to be real thorough and professional. <laughs> and then by the time I got to the second one, I was so tired. I was yawning and I was just trying to like speed through the whole thing. I was like, there's like a little button on YouTube that lets you slow things down or speed things up. I was like, just take advantage of that button because I'm trying to get out of here and go home. Um, <laughs> so I think it's real interesting, those previous recordings I need. But I have to go through all of it. It's part of the protocol. I have to check the box for my department that said I covered all of it. I know y'all are all going to sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would too. Um, so you do need, of course, pencils, pens, paper, things like that for the class. Um, I don't know about highlighters too much. Colored pens are going to be your friend this semester. So I know she's already a big advocate of them, but I buy these. I don't know if you can see them on the camera. Let me stop sharing real quick. Um, they are these pens right here. I don't think it's going to focus, but it's called Friction, F-R-I-X-I-O-N, and they're erasable, okay? The only thing is, is that they do come off with heat, so don't leave your notes in your car on a hot summer day. It will just disappear, but luckily, you can stick it in the freezer and it'll all come back. <laughs> um, as long as you didn't rub it off, it'll come back whenever you stick it back in the freezer, okay? Um, so be careful, or if you have like a cup of coffee, I have done that and set it on my notebook, and then there's like a big circle of no print anymore, and I had to stick it in the refrigerator so that it could come back. Um, but they're really cool because they're nice and neat, you can do different colors, and you can erase everything. Okay, so I highly recommend that. We're going to be doing a lot of graphing in this class, especially for chapter seven, because you won't know what to do unless you see the image. Okay. So we're going to be like revolving things and turning things around mentally, <laughs> but you need to be able to see it so that you can kind of envision what's going to happen as you revolve these things. Okay. And so those colored pens, if I have multiple graphs then the colored pens are going to come in handy. Okay. Or colored pencils if you want to go old school, right? Um, it's just a lot of sharpening and erasing possibly, but you can do that too. Okay. But they will be your friend <laughs> in this class and I will be using them as well. Okay, so the online and the remote classes, and actually, you guys too, in the face to face, but for the face to face, it's only for the text, okay. But you will need a computer or a laptop with a webcam when we get to the test, okay? And as far as that, the online students should already have it because they're in an online environment. So for them, they're going to be required to do that practice run like this week. 
just to make sure that they have all their equipment. But for those of you that signed up for a remote class or face-to-face -face class, you weren't expected originally to have a webcam, okay? So for you guys, that will give you some more time to get that practice uh, test done, okay? But you definitely wanna try to get it sooner rather than later just so you know everything's all set up. Um, of course, you do wanna have access to the internet regardless of what modality you're in, which section you're in, um, just because all your homework is online. Right, and all of our stuff is in Canvas, which is awesome. It says a printer, but you don't need a printer. I don't know why that's there. And then a lot of this stuff was from the department, it's just standard. Um, I do not recommend that you resort to Kinko's or FedEx for your scanning, only because when you take the test, tests are the only time you have to scan something in. So when you're doing your homework, you don't need to turn in paperwork. When you're doing your review, you don't need to turn in paperwork. You only need to turn it in for your tests. But after you take that test, you only have 30 minutes. So unless you're taking your tests at FedEx, the chances are you're not going to be able to get that scan turned in within those 30 minutes. Okay. So I don't recommend that that's your option. I recommend you either, I don't even suggest that you own a scanner. It's, it's unnecessary in this day and age. Um, what I do recommend is that you get the CAM scanner app. It is free but it does have ads if you get the free version. If you pay for it, then you just don't get the ads and it doesn't say your document's been created by Cam Scanner at the bottom and stuff like that. I mean, there's a little bit of perks, but I pay for it, but that's just because I want things a bit more professional. Um, I didn't pay for it at the beginning though. So I used it for about two or three years before I decided to go pay for it. But you can totally use it without ever having to pay anything. Okay, just whenever the ads come up, I put out a button. But it is the only one that it goes across the different uh, things. So it works on iPhones, it works on tablets, Macs, it works on Android, it works on win laptops that are desktops that have Windows. Um, it works on all of them. And there's a little uh, tutorial there on how to use it as well. That tutorial is embedded in other papers too, as we keep going. Um, we do need to have this TI-36 Pro. So I'm going to search it real quick so that you can see what it looks like. It is this one here, and it's a black calculator. Um, I would get it from Amazon. It just because it's only 20 bucks. Man, prices are going up everywhere. That's just crazy. Um, it used to be like $13, $14, $15, but now they're 20 um, if you go to the bookstore, they're going to market them up. So they're probably going to be like 25 or 30 at the bookstore. So I would consider them personally. Um, you're better off just getting it online um, or walking into Walmart, Target, something like that, seeing if they have it. You see the, the borrowing? Yes, it's just going to get to that. They do lend them out in the department. And if you lose it, it's not too bad. It's like 20 bucks to replace it, right? So if you do happen to lose it, it's not too big of a loss versus if you were to have to you want to leave and lose that, that's like almost 200 bucks. Okay. Um, there's so much that you can do in a graphing calculator. You can take derivatives, you can take integrals, you can graph everything and all those things I need you to know how to do. So I don't want you to have that calculator because then you're just going to rely on a calculator to do all the things that I need to make sure that you know how to do. Okay. So I just kind of take that temptation away <laughs> and give you the basic calculator. And then now we're kind of stuck to having to do it. So no calc graphing calculators are allowed on the test, only the scientific ones, okay? And if you happen to not have your scientific calculator when you're taking the test, I do also embed a scientific calculator into the test. So it's there if you needed it, okay? Um, but this one is better than the one that's embedded in the test. So if you can get a hold of that one, I would. I think one of the first sections, not one of the first, one of the sections that we'll do like halfway into the semester, um, it's, what is it called? Partial fraction decomposition, which you've seen in pre -cal. Um, But we're gonna be doing it again to do integrals. And when we get there, you know how you have to set up like a system of equations to figure out the partial fraction? Well, that thing you can do matrices in there and it will figure it all out. It won't work for all of them, but majority of them it will. Okay, so it'll come in handy when we get to there. This other scientific calculator does not do matrices. So you could get it, it'll do everything else, but it won't do the matrix part. Okay. 
This one will do all the stuff that that one does, but and maybe easy. So definitely try to get a hold of that. If you need one, come to the syllabus and it has the instructions on how to check one out. Okay. I'm not going to click on it because it's a big document. It's got a lot of stuff to read. But you could click on it and then find out what you need to do to get a longer copy. I know a lot of you borrowed one last semester. So you would pretty much do the same kind of thing where you have to have your schedule and your ID and then fill out the form and then get to get copy. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Um, again, here's that laptop loan program. So if you click here, it'll give you the instructions on how to start that so that you can borrow a laptop if you need one for the semester. Okay. So for those of you who have a computer but it doesn't have a webcam, try to get one of those laptops. If you have a laptop and maybe this did happen to me last semester, somebody dropped their laptop and it just completely broke the whole screen. And so then they had to emergency go get a loaner laptop for the rest of the semester. So it's there for anyone that needs it. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the learning outcomes. I mean, if you're super curious, we're going to learn as we go, right? But if you're super curious as to what you're going to figure out, this is all the stuff we're going to learn. <laughs> um, it's a lot of cool stuff, but it's a lot. So <laughs> just bear with me. We'll kind of make our way through it as we go along. Um, evaluation, I do have to submit something called early alerts, midterms, and then final grades. I have to do all of those three. So you will see emails or things like that saying, you know, hey, you have an early alert, whatever. I just go based on how you've been performing so far or whatever your total grade is at that moment in time when I have to submit these reports. So if for some reason you hadn't turned something in and your grade's not too great, I have to enter what's in there. Um, but if we've already had that conversation that, you know, you know why it is what it is, then you're fine. You don't have to contact me. Like the emails automatically tell you things. But if you do contact me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, what happened to my people? Oh, there it is. Like I had a whole group of people on the side. Um, okay, so just be aware that I do have to submit those. And also be aware that I have seen grades slip flop in both directions. So I have seen people with an A at midterm and then just fall off the face of the earth and then end up with an F at the end of the semester. And I've seen people with Fs at midterms and then pull themselves together and pull off an A at the end of the semester. So your midterm has to be put in. One, it's not on your transcript, so you don't have to worry about that. And two, it's not a determining factor on what your grade's gonna be at the end of the semester. It's just kind of a heads up on how you're doing so far, right? So if you're happy with that score, then keep doing what you're doing. If you're not happy with that score, then improve something. Okay, so that you can improve your grade. Um, these are the typical, right, the typical grading skills that we use. This is not a developmental class. We won't be using any of that stuff. Um, and then this is the way your grade is going to be determined. And I have to clarify this web assigned homework assignment section. It is 30% of your grade. So unless you are making a 100 percent on all four of your tests and the final exam there is absolutely no way you're going to pass this class without doing it okay and it's intended like that on purpose because i always tell people that math is not a spectator sport right it's just like i hate to use this as an analogy but i always use it as an analogy you watch an nba basketball game you watch these guys performing all these cool tricks and doing all these great things with basketball right you see them and you're like, hey, that looks cool. Can you go home and do it on the court? Can you go? No, right? <laughs> you would have to practice <laughs> all of those techniques in order to be able to perform to that level. So when you see me going over the problems and you see me working them out flawlessly or thoroughly or real smoothly, that does not mean that you can do it, okay? Just because it makes sense what I'm doing does not mean that you personally can do it the same you need to practice okay and the way you practice is by getting into the web assign assignments and trying those problems out okay and a lot of those problems are very similar to the ones you see on the reviews and again are the ones you see on the tests so hopefully that's like kind of training you right to be able to perform well on that test okay so just keep that in mind it's super 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 important i've never had a student not do the homework and pass the class never 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 have i ever had that happen okay so be very mindful of that. Um, but it's not just web assign assignments. 
that make up this 30%. And I'm putting my head down because there's some things that are kind of rolled down onto us and I have to implement them. So I'm sorry, but this is what it is, okay? And I'll explain it. So web assign assignments are there. So that includes your homework assignments, which is there's a homework section for each section that we cover in a chapter, right? But then your reviews are also going to be in web assign, okay? And if they're not in WebAssign, if I end up putting them in Canvas, those will still count as homework grades, okay? So both your test review and your WebAssign homeworks will count for your, this category of 30%, okay? Another thing that's going into that, and this is the mandate that came down, the president has required that we enforce students to visit their resources. So what that means for us is Michael Pizzo came in here and talked to us about math world, right? And I'm gonna have to talk about it too because now you guys are required to go to math. It's not an option anymore. You are required to go to math world. And it is part of your grade, okay? It is gonna be part of that 30%. So it's another assignment that goes in there. It could be a real easy 100 or it could be a pain in your butt and bring your grade down to what, a 66, even if you have hundreds on everything else. Okay, so take it seriously because it will bring down your homework average, okay? Um, and the way it works is compliant or non-compliant, period, okay? So you either get 100 for that week or you get a zero for that week. There's no negotiable, okay? Yes. So you have to go like once a week or like? You, I'll talk about it. Okay. But yes, yes, you're going to have to go 90 minutes per week which is nothing compared to what some other instructors are making their students go four hours a week, okay? <laughs> so I'm doing 90 minutes because I felt like four hours is way too much. But at the same time, me personally taking a class and I'm good at this stuff, right? This is my thing. Even when I was taking it as a student, I was great at it, okay? Um, I was like her, she can just like pop it out. You show me one time and okay, I got it. You know what I mean? Um, so the, it's great, but it still takes time <laughs> to get the things done. Okay. It's not going to, you're not going to finish all your weekly assignments in 90 minutes. I promise you it's not going to happen. Okay. Um, unless it's one of those sections that are really, really, really short and there's only like two of them. Then yes. But if you have four sections in that week, you're probably not going to be able to finish in 90 minutes. Okay. But, 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 but. <laughs> it sounds crazy. But you don't have to go in person, okay? So yes, Math World is in Science 101, and you can go over there in person. They also have virtual Math World. And all you do is log in during their hours. I He went over the hours. I'll show them to you again in a minute, um, especially for the remote students, because you guys didn't hear it. Um, but we are, we are going to... Um, you can just log in and you sit in there and you are in a different window working on your web assignment or whatever. And then if you have a question, you can raise your hand inside the Zoom and then the tutor will come and answer your question, whatever it is. Okay. But you could literally just sit in the Zoom while you're doing your web assignment. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I get easily distracted, so sorry. <laughs> Um, but let me go through the syllabus. You can see the rest of the stuff, and I'll have all the links and everything else. So it's not as bad as it sounds, and I did try to make it as low as I could possibly make it, but I got away and I got permission to just do 90 minutes versus four hours. Yes. Does, um, does the time go by like signing at Math World? Yes. So if you log into Math World in person, then when you log out, it'll clock those minutes. So whatever it was. Um, or if you're logging in on Zoom, the second you log in till the minute that you log out, it'll count all of that time. So that's what I'm saying. You can log into virtual math world and do your work on a computer and it's just capturing that time, okay? And then when you log out of Zoom, um, the virtual math world Zoom, then it'll just block whatever that is. So you could go in there and just do work for like 30 minutes, three days a week and you've got it done, okay? Yes. That's starting this week or next week? It is starting this week, and only because there's like four, no, three sections that we have to cover this week. So it does start this week. 
Um, but I'm going to show you a little bit like where to go, okay? especially if you're just trying to do it online. Okay? If you're going to go in person, you just go to 101. You log in on a computer, go sit down and do your stuff, and then log out to Brady and it'll count it. Okay? I don't remember what the default is because it does happen where students will log in and forget to log out. And there is a default, but I don't know what the default is on like how many minutes it gives you if you never log out. I don't know if it gives you like 10 minutes, if it gives you 30 minutes. I have no idea how long the default is if you never log out. So if you are going in person, make sure you log in and log out. And I'll ask him what his student says. Um, but in our class, this is where you would go, especially for the online students that are remote, because you guys, chances are not coming to campus, right? Um, But if you go over here and see where it says virtual math world, and if I click it, it takes me to their page and then it gives you all of their hours. So they are pretty much available eight to seven every day and then eight to two on Friday and eight to two on Saturday. Okay. So you try to squeeze in your 90 minutes in there somewhere. I mean, you can do like 15 minutes, six times, like whatever, however you want to do it. Um, and then the links are down here. So you are in 2414. So this top link would be the Zoom link that you use. Okay. And you just go in there. There will probably be someone that greets you when you get in there and be like, hey, you know, just work on your stuff. If you have a question for me right now, I'll answer it. If you don't have a question for me right now, just raise your hand when you do. And then you just work. You don't even have to have your camera on. I mean, nothing. Okay. So it's pretty easy if you're just doing it virtually. Um, but it is there. And then I think down here is where I described like that whole all or nothing at all situation. <laughs> so for the online class, all the classes, make sure that you complete the orientation by Friday, with the exception for a couple of you that don't have a webcam in the remote class and the face-to-face -face class. Because you guys were not required to have a remote before I met you. Okay. I'm just letting you know now to take the test, you'll need to have that. You don't even need to have it if you're in a face to face because you could probably go to a testing center and then you can take your test there. So you don't have to have your own um, webcam. You could go and use our resources. Okay? But for the remote and for the online, you definitely need to have the webcam. Um, and if I need to extend that practice test, I will. Okay? For the remote and the face to face. For the online, they should have already had a webcam, so they should be able to finish everything by week one. Um, Last day to drop is April 14th. Hopefully, you don't have anybody dropping, um, but it is April 14th. After that, you can no longer drop the class. And if you just disappear, um, you won't even get a W. You'll get an F or whatever your grade is after all the grades are populated. Okay. So, attendance is um, recorded. However, I don't do it as part of your grade. So, it's not going to count toward your grade, it's more for record keeping. So if someone, it has happened, not necessarily to me, but it has happened to other people where students will come back and be like, that test was outrageous. The teacher never even covered any of that. I don't know where all these problems came from. And then the teacher goes and looks up their log on how long they've been spending in the programs. And they've been spending like maybe an hour a week in the program. And they're like, well, no wonder you didn't know anything about the test. You're not even spending the amount of time you should be spending in the course online. Um, so it just helps for record keeping. If someone's like, why well, miss that information? Well, yeah, you were absent that day. <laughs> so just make sure you keep up with that. If you are absent, you are still responsible for the information that you missed. How do you get that information? Right, just watch the recording. Okay. Um, again, this talks about the number of allowable, but I don't drop people even if they have four absences. I'm not going to this semester. In the past, I would have conversations, but now I'm like, whatever. Um, it's just for record keeping. So if you're doing fantastic and awesome and you happen to be absent more than four days, not a problem. Okay. Um, if you're not doing great and you never come into class, well, then yeah, I'm probably going to pull you aside and ask <laughs> what's going on here, right? We need to pass. So, um, the electronic devices, usually it says like cellular phones. I just ask that you have them on silent or vibrate um, just so that they're not making a bunch of noises when you when you are doing stuff. And since we're not taking tests in class, um, it shouldn't be an issue. Like you don't have to store them out of sight or anything like that because we're not going to be doing tests. 
and you'll be doing your tests at home. You're not supposed to have them within sight when you're at home. You can go sleep in the door somewhere. Um, the homework is mandatory and it is online. Again, it's like 30% of your grade, right? So there's the web assign assignments for each section, okay? Then there's the test reviews. And then there's this Uxura category, which is the math world time, okay? And so here I tried to explain how it's gonna work. So if you spend 90 minutes or more, then your assignment will be marked complete and you get a hundred for that week, for that quote unquote homework math world assignment. Um, if you spend less than 90 minutes, and unfortunately this does include 89 minutes and 59 seconds, okay, you will be marked incomplete. It says it's a minimum of 90 minutes. So you either met the minimum of 90 minutes or you did not meet the minimum of 90 minutes, okay? There's no in between, okay? Yes. So it, it does tell you how many minutes you have so far that week, right? MathWorld will tell me how many minutes. They give me a report every Monday for the previous week. Well, they tell us. That we be no you could ask. Uh, uh huh. You could ask. I don't know if they if people do like when you log in if they give you that number. They do updates to their little program, so I have no idea. <laughs> but you could ask them, and they could look it up real fast. Okay. So you could always ask them whether even if you're in virtual MathWorld, just say, "Hey, can I get a count on what my minutes are for the week so far?" And then they'll tell you. Now, unfortunately, though, the, they were very adamant about you can't, what is it? They call it front loading, is what they called it, where 90 minutes times 15 weeks, right, is whatever number that is. You can't do all those minutes in one week and then be like, okay, I'm going to get hundreds for the rest of the semester. It's not going to work like that. It's 90 minutes per week. And did you meet that 90 minutes or did you not that specific week? There's one exception for it. And that's if you let me know ahead of time that you're going to be out a particular week. So if you tell me ahead of time, he missed, I'm not going to be able to be here next week. I had planned a vacation. I'm having a surgery. I'm having a baby, whatever it is that's going on, that you're going to be out. Let me know. And then you can do 180 minutes that week before, and I will count it for both. Okay. But you got to let me know if it's one of those situations. Okay? I, otherwise, I will just assume that you were in math world and you needed a lot of help. And that's why you were in there 180 minutes. And then now we're on the new sections. You may need more help with these sections. Okay. So make sure that you do the 90 minutes per week. Again, I apologize. Not my mandate. <laughs> I just have to reinforcement. I want to keep my job. So sorry. <laughs> um, it is it will be to your benefit though, because they can help you. So if you're stuck, you don't have to sit around and wonder. You don't have to text anybody. You, you raise the little account on the Zoom and they'll come back and help you. Okay. So it does help. Did anybody use Mount World last semester at all? You did? Yeah. Good. You did? I know you were in there because I would see you in the window. Anybody else? You too also? Okay, good, good. It does help. Even if you don't ever ask any questions, <laughs> just sitting in there in that kind of environment, it helps a little bit. Okay. I just go before the exams and it will really help. Yes, yes. Good, good. Yes, definitely go over the reviews, right? You try them and then any of them that you got wrong, get with somebody so they can kind of help you through them. You could also ask me. Text me, right? Anytime you have problems in the homeworks or the reviews, you can always ask me. I always say I'm the first resource, but there are other resources after that, okay? You never have to rely solely on me. I would prefer it that way just because I like to control what's going on, <laughs> but I'm not the only resource, okay? There are other resources. Math world is definitely one of those. Um, and the reason why they're mandating it, I will tell you, is because they have been collecting statistics on MathWorld for over a decade. And shoot, since I started working there in 2007, so that's already almost 20 years, right? What, 17 years that they've been collecting data? And they have shown that the students that do all of their homework in MathWorld pass. Period. 100% of all the students that do all their homework in math world after class versus students who do all their homework but don't do it outside of math world. They don't do it in math world. They do it outside of math world. Not all of those girls pass. Okay. So that's why they're kind of motivating people to use math world because they know if you do your stuff in math world, chances are you're going to pass. And why is that? Because you have those people to help you as you need help. Right. 
You're not just been pondering things for too long and then going, I forget it. <laughs> and you have somebody there to keep you on task. Um, let's see. So this is going about the test. There are four unit tests. Um, their average will cost 50% of the grade. And then the final exam itself will promise 20% of the grade. Those of you who've had any in previous semesters, you know that at the end of the semester, the, comp the final exam is comprehensive, which means it covers everything throughout the whole semester. And if you could figure it out by then, then I have no problem going back and replacing a test score. I just can't do it with confidence replacing more than one test score, okay? Um, so I do replace one lowest test score, okay? And only if it benefits you, right? If you got a 50 on the final and your lowest test score is a 70, why would I replace that, right? Doesn't make sense. So it only works in your benefit, but I do do that at the end of the semester. Um, so if you totally bomb the first test or anything like that, don't worry, there's a way to give you that score. Um, we are going to be doing all the tests in the lockdown browser. Um, you do have to have a webcam during your testing. It says failure will, re will result in a zero. And the reason why is because you won't even be able to start the test until you've done all the webcam situation. Um, it won't even let you start the test. And so then if you never start it, how are you going to complete it by deadline, right? And then if you don't put by the deadline, it's a zero, right? So that's, it will lead eventually to zero. Um, you cannot use the cell phone or Chromebook to take a test. Lockdown browser does not work. It's not compatible with those two things, okay? You can do it on an iPad, on a tablet. You just cannot do it on a Chromebook for the cell phone, okay? Um, I do not accept late work. And it's a big reason why. It's not just because I'm trying to be mean. Um, never trying to be mean. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, but I'm not trying to. Um, but it's because I have six classes this semester. And if anybody gets off track, it throws everything off for me. I have to keep track of student A doing this own thing, student B doing his own thing, student C doing their own thing. And it gets really confusing. And then when I need to be grading, I can't grade everything because I don't have everything. And then I can't post it because somebody could get the solutions too early. You know what I mean? It causes a bunch of situations to happen. So because of that, I just don't accept late work, okay? However, I'll get to it in a little bit. With the web assigned stuff, you do get three extension requests in the semester. So I tell people to save those for emergencies because the last thing you want to do is have a lazy week and then be like, miss, give me my three extensions. And then the next week you have an emergency, a real emergency, and you can't extend those because you already used your three extensions, okay? So definitely save them for emergency. We get toward the end and you're like, hey, I haven't done them yet, so <laughs> just do them now. <laughs> That's okay. okay. But wait, so if you're at that point, don't just use them at the very beginning. Um, try to only use them for emergency. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. Um, one at a time, let's see. Let's see. And so there are steps like you do, and this is very important. The ID identification, it records you when you're taking the test. So it records you showing your ID, it records you doing your environment check, it records you while you're taking your test, all of that good stuff. And I have to have evidence that I have verified everyone's identity, okay? So when you do the test, every single time you take the test, you have to show the camera your ID. You don't want me to know your address or anyone to know your address. Just put a post-it or a sticker or something on your address. But I do have to see your name and your face okay, on the ID. It could be a school ID. It could be a state ID. It could be a government ID. It could be a military ID. Um, as long as it has your face and your name. Okay? Yes. Is there like a place here we could take a test to? Oh, no. There is. There's a testing center. It's under the student resources, there's a link to it. Um, if you need that when we get there, we'll talk more about it. Yes. Um, but they do have that. So you, you need to show that ID to the camera. And then you do need to do an environment check. We had, <laughs> there's some stuff going on in legal battles as far as education is concerned. And somebody had a problem with like showing the room in the Zoom or in the environment check. And they were like, that's a breach of my privacy and blah, 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 blah. So you're not required to show the whole room. Before we had people showing the whole room because we wanted to verify there were no other people in the room that would be helping you with your work, right? That was the whole purpose behind having people show their room. 
Now it's a little bit different. You only have to show your desk area where you're going to be working. If you're working on a bed or a table, show the bed, show the table. That space that you're going to be working on. And what you're looking for is making sure that you have your writing utensil, your blank papers, and your calculator, and nothing else. No books, no extra notes. You will be provided notes in the test themselves. Um, but you don't have any other laptops, computers, cell phones, anything else around you. You can only show the desk area in which you're going to work. And then always have your volume on. Your mics should be on. So I don't want to see your mouth my, 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 like moving around, but I don't hear nothing because I'm going to assume you're talking to your friend. Your friend's giving you the answers. Okay. So make sure that you have your mic on. And people talk to me sometimes. They're like, oh my God, Miss, I'm really not going to do great on this problem. <laughs> So, and I hear it all. I have to watch them. And I do watch them. So look what it says right here. <laughs> Clothes are important. I cannot tell you how many times people go in there in their underwear. <laughs> I don't know if they think that nobody's watching, but I watch them. And I have to message them. <laughs> Please put on a shirt <laughs> when you're taking the test. Um, there, I'm not seeing some interesting things. Very interesting things in the video. Don't forget you are on camera. Okay? Don't forget it. I don't mind if you pick your nose, but I have seen other things <laughs> I would not want to see. Um, <laughs> so just remember you are on camera. Um, the environment check, you do have to show that desktop area. If you don't show it, you're automatically deducted in points because I can't verify that you don't have other materials that you're not allowed to have, okay? Um, and then again, no graphing calculators are allowed on tests and you will have to upload your paperwork within 30 minutes, okay? Once you start getting used to using that Cam Scanner app, it should take like five minutes to take your photos and to upload it into Canvas. It doesn't take that long, okay? But at the beginning, I'm gonna give you like an hour for that practice round, just for those that don't know how to use Cam Scanner, they can get used to it, okay? Uh, but it shouldn't take more than an hour to get that in. Now, this is a big one, the single PDF file. In the past, I have had many online students and remote students, when they turn in their tests, they give me multiple files for page one, page two, page three, page four. I cannot do that. There are too many students and too many classes for me to individually go into each person's submission and click on every single file that they uploaded and then print them all individually. There is a button in Canvas that lets me print all submissions but it only prints your first document for all the submissions. So that's why I tell people you need to just submit one document so that instead of it taking me 30 minutes to print people's work, it'll take me two minutes, okay? So you want to be mindful of that because I need to turn back everybody's paperwork within 10 days. It's not gonna happen if I have to spend 30 minutes just downloading for every single class, okay? Then it takes me about an hour per student to grade every single test. Because I like to give everybody feedback. Okay? I don't like to just put checks and X's and then move on with my day. I like to tell you what happened, where it happened, what's going on, where the error is. Okay, So that you can learn from it. So I only can work, I work 50 hours per week and I only have so much. 50 hours sounds like a lot, but it's not. Um, once I 50 hours, I am being very strict on myself because I didn't used to be. But now I'm like, I get paid for 50 hours. Do not work past 50 hours. <laughs> so I'm trying to be real adamant with that. So if it comes to that 50 hour mark and I haven't finished, it's going to have to wait till the next day. And if I didn't finish that, it's going to have to wait till the next day. And the more that that keeps happening, the less likely or closer I get to 10 days, right? So I want to get your stuff back to you ASAP, which is why all these rules are super important. Okay. I know it sounds like a lot. You're like, whatever, Miss. But it is. <laughs> just make my life easy. <laughs> it's already going to be a headache to grade everything just because I have to read everything thoroughly and give everybody feedback. Um, that should be the only hard part, not printing. It should not be a hard part. Um, also, make sure that your pages are numbered and that your problems are in order. So even if you have to do page one, number one, page two, number two, so that you could skip around on the test, make sure when you upload it that all your pages are in order. Okay. Again, I don't want to waste 10, 15 minutes per student trying to hunt for the problems. Okay. I want to be able to just go number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and get on. Okay. So make sure that you put those things in order. 
it's not so bad when it's one person not doing it, but when everybody's not caring about how it goes, then it really becomes messy and it makes everything take a lot longer. Um, also make sure that your scans are not too blurry or not um, too blurry. And then there's another one about what it said. It said something that's earlier. Um, um, can I ask you a question? And not, not too light. So it can't be blurry and it can't be light. Make sure that it's focused, the image, and then make sure that it's not like so light that I can't tell the difference to where the ink is and where the paper is, okay? I need to be able to see what you've written. It can't Hello? just be invisible, okay? Hello? Make sure that you actually can see your prints. And people do ask me, why do I have to fill my work on my test? Because you have to. Uh, Math is so interesting because many of you will do some weird, wrong stuff and still end up with the same answer, the correct answer. But what you're doing is totally off base, like completely, like in space, like just alien stuff y'all are doing. But somehow you end up with the answer five and that's the answer. <laughs> um, and so I have to see the paperwork because I need to make sure you know what you're doing versus just getting lucky, okay? So I need to be able to tell the difference between a lucky person and somebody who knows what they're doing. That's why I have to have you show your work. Okay. I know I get a lot of kickback with that. Well, I know what I'm doing, but you need to not only know what you're doing, you need to be able to communicate it properly. You need to be able to write it out and explain it to me that you know what you're doing. Okay. That is just as important as just knowing. Um, because what good is knowing anything if you can't convey it to someone else, right? What's the point? You can't share that information with anyone. Okay. The whole point of knowledge is those who share and everybody grows, right? So we have to be able to communicate. Um, again, here's tutoring information. I think if you go to Math Emporium, they have different hours. Notice that they're open till 8 p.m. Um, but if you go to the SBC Math in Canvas, uh, I have to go look for this because I think I have that added in my Canvas class but I'll add it in there because I will count time for both of these. They are both part of our department. And so this is just at Southwest campus. That's the only big difference, okay? Except on Fridays, she's here for extended hours um, on this campus, the MLK campus, okay? But normally all of the Math Emporium stuff is done at Southwest. If you happen to live over there and you prefer to go over there, that's okay too. Um, both of them do track your hours and I do get reports for both. Um, there's also the TNT tutoring. This one will not count toward your 90 minutes. This is like a one-stop shop. They tutor everything, like everything, all the classes. Um, and that also is where you would go to take your test. Okay. So they have like a little individual private room with a camera and the computer and you can take your tests in there. Okay. So if you're interested in doing that, you can click on that link and find out that information. Okay. Um, and if you get the accommodation letter for your disability with extra time, I can't be in here extra time. There's another class in here at two o'clock. So um, you'd have to go take your test in the testing center if you have got that extra time, okay? Um, this is all the academic integrity stuff. The only thing is really big for me is this when you're taking the online test. You're not allowed to have any of these extra things. You're supposed to have blank paper, calculator, pencil, or blank. That's it. So if you do have any of these other things, I do have to go fill out a violation form um, if I see it. And I promise you people try to be sneaky and I won't tell you how I know what they're doing because then you'll do it better. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can tell in certain situations whether someone else, is, someone is using another device aside from the device that they have a lockdown browser on. Um, and that's cheating. You're not supposed to be able to look up stuff, right? You're supposed to just go look what you know and the worksheets that are inside the test. So I promise you that the 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 consequences can be from getting a zero on that assignment to getting kicked out of the school. I know whatever grade you thought you were gonna make before cheating is not worse getting kicked out of the school, right? So make sure. And then how are you gonna explain that to the next college you go to? Oh, I got kicked out for cheating, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so make sure that you don't try to do all that. I'm not saying that anyone would. I just have to forward. Um, okay, let's go. So I think we got all that. This is just the, the college's information. So I'm going to close this and keep on going.
here is your chance to ask me questions since this is kind of like our contract, like you're going to do this, I'm going to do this. Um, so go through the syllabus, read everything thoroughly. If you're cool with it, write in the chat. I understand the syllabus completely and thoroughly. If you have questions like this person here asked a question, write, but ask your question. Once I answer your question, I'm going to reply to this person as well. Um, once you, I answer your question, I'll ask you, do you have any more questions? If not, please reply with, I understand the syllabus from the game group, okay? And the reason why I have this is for documentation purposes. So when the test comes, and you don't do your environment check, and I take off 10 points because I said I would, and you complain about it, I'm gonna be like, look, you said you read it and you understood <laughs> this is what's happening. Okay, so make sure that I will have to have everyone say that statement at some point. But make sure you get all your questions answered first before you say them. Okay, so go through it and ask all your questions. I don't care if you have 10 questions, number one, number two, number three, number four, ask away. Okay, and if there's something in there that I need to fix, this is the week where I got to fix it. Okay, so make it clear to everyone. Okay, let me scroll to the bottom. A lot of people are already in there. This is that quiz. There are four questions. They are not too bad if you just came from Cal 1. Um, even if you came from Cal 2, maybe. I don't know. Once you get in Cal 2, you get confused between derivatives and antiderivatives. It happens a lot, even for me. So just remember that this test is on Cal 1 stuff. So it's four Cal 1 questions. Can you take these four derivatives? Okay. So there's four problems in there that's going to ask you. And you should be able to do that problem. I think I said you should be able to get an 80. I need to change it to a 75. Honestly, you should be able to get 100 in four questions. And it's like one of them is a derivative of a constant, one of them is a derivative of a polynomial, one of them is a derivative of a quotient, so a quotient rule, right? And then one of them, um, I can't remember what it is. Well, I think it's like an equation, and then they ask you for the derivative. Um, but it's not too, too bad. So you should be able to get 100. I need to fix this with 80. I changed it over here, but I didn't change it over here. If you do not get a 100 on this quiz, it is your responsibility to figure out those skills that were in that particular problem that you got wrong. We won't be covering everything that we did in Cal 1. However, we will be taking derivatives throughout the semester. So you will see this stuff come up over and over and over again. Um, but I do have these sheets of paper that have like all the derivative rules. Cal 1 guys, I gave you this right last semester. I'm gonna give you another one. Uh, start off fresh, and then another one with all of your pre-cal stuff. In the remote class and the online, there's an electronic version. I'll show it to you in a second. In Canvas. So everyone will have them electronically as well. Uh, but this is just basically to make sure that you're ready for the material, make sure that you know how to use your webcam and your lockdown browser, and then make sure that you know how to submit your paperwork afterward. Okay. So all of that information I can get and then I can make sure you're wearing shirts and you're doing your environment check correctly and you're showing your ID and all that good stuff before it counts for real, for real, right? So this is like my chance to like help uh, get all the wrinkles out before we head forward. So this is just a reminder of all the rules for the paperwork. Make sure you are only turning in one file, just one file. And then this is a discussion. It kind of has this thing. This is a four-hour course, right? The course number is 2414. That second number, that second digit tells you how many course hours there are. So we have, we meet for just about two hours, right? Two days a week. So that's the four hours that they're talking about, okay? Um, so you are required, for the online students, they are required to complete four minimum hours a week online, okay? And that includes the 90 minutes because during those 90 minutes, you're working in website, isn't that online, right? So it's included for the online class. Um, and for you guys as well, there's no minimum number of hours you have to do because you come to class for four hours, so you're good. Um, but you also have to do the 90 minutes. Now, according to any guide to college, any guide to college, um, Depending on the level of difficulty for that course, that's how many hours you should be expecting to spend outside the classroom, okay? Now, this class is gonna be considered easy for very few of you, I promise. I'm sorry that I promise, but I promise. <laughs> so if it's, to, if it's easy, then you would only spend a multiplier of one 
times the traditional class, which means four hours outside of class, right? If it's moderate, I'm going to start with a word, it would be a multiplier of two, which means you would expect to work on homework and review something like that, eight hours. And if this is a difficult subject for you, then they say you should expect to spend three. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to, but it says to plan for it so that you have that time should you need it, okay? And then that would be 12 hours. So that's a lot of time, right? People always wonder, well, why is 12 hours of courses considered full time? Because if you multiply that by three, it's 36 plus the 12 classes, class hours. That's 48 hours. Isn't that a full-time person schedule? 48 hours a week? So that's why 12 hours is considered 48 hours. Because they're not just factoring the time you're in class. They're also factoring the time you're going to be working on assignments outside of class. Okay. So it all kind of goes together. Um, and if you're part-time, like six hours, then you spend like 24 hours per week. So this kind of just goes over the canvas, the textbook, the web assigned stuff, um, the computer requirements for us. You cannot use, oh, unless it says, this is wrong. So maybe regular Windows tablets don't work, but I know for a fact that iPads work with the laptop route. Because there's literally a button that says, make it compatible with iPads, and I click it all the time. So I know that iPads work, but maybe Windows tablets don't. You'll find out when you try to mess around with the factory. <laughs> um, but this is a discussion. I do want everybody to reply to this. So make sure you introduce yourself. Um, tell me your major, tell me some fun facts about yourself, and then also post to somebody else's reply. And it doesn't have to be in your section. Okay. So if you see an online student in there, you can reply to the online student. If an online student sees a face to face student in there, they can reply to the face to face student and you include the remotes. They'll just reply to anybody. Um, brain fuse. Is cool and then not so cool. You only get six hours for free, but math is 24 seven. So if you are working on math at three o'clock in the morning, math world's not open, right? Put go in the brain to get your question answered. Okay, so it is an option. Um, and the link to get in there is right here. I also have brain views on the left side as well. Okay, but you only have six hours. So only use it like, when you can't get to math again, okay? Um, this is wrong. We do not have an embedded tutor. I told you I copied a lot of stuff from the pre talk class. Um, and the pre talk class has an embedded tutor. We do not. So let's get that out of there. But the math world link is here in this page, and it's also here on the side. So you can get to them in either. This one's probably going to be more convenient going forward. These are the steps that you're going to follow for the online students and the remote students. You're going to do this, okay? For the face-to-face -face students, you're going to have to do it as well. However, if you, every single one of you in the face-to-face -face are my previous students. I know that for a fact. Some of you guys that are in the remote, I know you're a previous student. So you already have Cengage Unlimited. So when you go in and you click on that Cengage Unlimited link, it literally is titled this. When you click on that, you might not have to go through all of these steps. You might have to just go straight into, the, I think it's step nine. Uh, no, it's step 11. So you might be able to skip all the way to step 11 if you already had a WebAssign account and a Cengage Unlimited account. Okay. So, now the cool thing about Cengage Unlimited is you do have access to all Cengage books, no matter what the subject is. So before you go buying your textbooks for your other classes, check in this Cengage website to make sure that it's not in there for free, okay? Because you get access to all the Cengage books for free. If it happens to be a Pearson published book, then it's not gonna be in there, okay? From McGraw-Hill published, it's not gonna be in there. But if it's Cengage, it will be in there. And the college is moving more towards all the books being from Cengage because we know that this is available, okay? So definitely check before you buy your other books. Our book will be in there. So once you get in, you'll close all the pop-ups and then you're gonna kind of follow these screenshots. I give you descriptions, but also screenshots. Um, and then finally, when you're done, you can keep going on to the getting started in web assignment. You guys have already done that assignment, but then it's gonna get started. Um, <laughs> that's the link that you would click. If I click it, it's gonna go straight to the pop-ups because I have a web assign account. Um, so it goes straight to step 11 right away. For the rest of you guys, it won't go straight to step 11. Um, 
So you'll have to like create a login and all this good stuff. Um, these are the web assignment settings are the same as before. You get 10 tries per problem. If you need more tries, just click on extension request and ask for more tries. Um, but the deadline extension request is different. That's when you're asking me to change the deadline, right? If something's due on Friday and you're saying, Miss, I'm not going to get it done on Friday. Can you push it back to you know Monday? Then that's a deadline extension. And you get three for the whole semester. So please only use them for emergency purposes. I need you guys to stay on task because those tests come around faster than you think, right? And so if you're not even falling behind, you're not going to be ready for that test when that test time comes. And I want you guys to be ready. So make sure that you're picking up. And then there's the assignment, whatnot. I think that's the last thing in the model. I'm going to go next door. Oh, no, it's not thing. Okay, so then you get to this page. Y'all have already all seen it, but the new people have not. So it talks to you about you know the whole point of this orientation. It gives you kind of a little background on me, shows you little updated pictures of my kids. Um, and then it talks about, you know, why I have the policies that I have. Um, and then basically, this is always my mantra throughout the whole semester. So I'm just an email or a text away. So never forget that. Okay. Um, if you're getting stuck and you have a question, just text me. Okay. I'm here. So as I record these, I will put these under the page that says uh, instructor videos. But if I go back to the modules page, um, notice that you've got a secondary resource, which is actually Cengage videos. So the guy who wrote the book made his own videos, and there are videos in there that you can go look at. So if you have my videos, I recommend you do look at my videos, and then you go straight to the homework. And then if it doesn't make sense, go to the secondary resource. If those don't make sense, go to the third, which is the PowerPoint presentations. If that don't make sense, go to the fourth, which is the textbook. Okay? But I, you should be able to watch my videos and then get to the Okay. And then ask me whenever you get stuck. But these are other resources and they're there for you. Um, formula sheets are right here. So those are the little two sheets that I showed you, the pre-cal one and then the calculus one. And that's pretty much all I have. I haven't linked these things in anywhere. Everything is like invisible for you. So you're not going to see any of that yet. And then put six of these together and it's simply for you. So that's all I've got. <laughs> Um, so make sure you go, whether you're remote, online, or face-to-face, -face, make sure you go through this entire module, although some things may be invisible for the face-to-face -face and the remote student. Okay? So you might not see this assignment, and there might be another one in there that you don't see, but for the most part, you can see all of them. Okay? So make sure that you go in there and you do that. Let me check. Do you have to do this? I don't understand. I think everybody has to do it, but I'll have to double check. Yeah, so everybody does. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know I went over a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you have, go ahead. I have a question, but I could wait till after class. But I don't hear anything. Somebody talking, Carlos? Are you talking? Uh, can you hear me? Jennifer, turning on and off. Can you can you hear me? And I don't hear anything. I'm gonna have to fix that. I said I have a question, but I can if wait. If you do have a question, test. try to type it in the chat. Um, but I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with the mics because. I was coming off and then they were apparently talking to me. I can't hear it. Um, the question on the test. Yes. Is it going to be available the whole weekend or is it just on a certain day? It will be due on a certain day. Let me show you in the calendar because I have it in here. I don't remember. I've just been doing so much the past couple of days. I do not remember. Okay, it's due on the following Monday. So like we'll do the review on Thursday and then you have that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to do it. So like about half a week. Yeah. I think they're all are like that, right? Thursday, Monday, Thursday. Oh, this one I had to do Friday because we weren't gonna have enough time. So that one you only have like two days, the rest of Thursday and then all of Friday. Well, a little bit different. Um, 
and then this one too. I may be able to, you know, move them around as long as people don't have a problem with us talking about a new section before taking that test, then it shouldn't be an issue. We can kind of work with those deadlines. Okay. Any other questions? Again, I'm sorry, remote people. Just please ask in the chat if you need to. Can you hear me? Because mine's kind of a lot to type. And it will probably pick you up on the recording. <laughs> but I, I'm, I am not hearing it. Okay, well, you guys in the face-to-face, -face, we're already about that time, like nine minutes left. Um, so you guys are free to go. If you have any questions for me, let me know. Make sure that you try to sign up for that Cengage Unlimited um, because in the next class period, we are going to be working on the website. Okay. There are three videos in there. They're at the very bottom of this module. You'll get to them. Um, right there, I'm going to put my instructor videos. And then once you have those, we'll be able to do the they are not discussions this time. I went away with all of them. Nobody did anyway. <laughs> I had to like nag and beg in order for me to do them. So I took them away. So you guys have a good day. Are you going to say? You ready? Yes. Oh, I just think I'm confused. Yes. Okay. Yes. I didn't see no, don't do that. Gather. Great. Imagine. I got a question. Yeah. No, I could. What's happening? That is normal. Everyone left. Oh, man. I tried to get rid of it. You know, Ozzy, man, that sucks. No, we'll probably see him at um. What do you say? Does that help us? Yeah, this is mandatory. That should be able to do it again. Yeah, that's true, man. Should do that. Okay, so let me go check my. Yeah. Um, cool with that, dude. Yeah. I'm just thinking. Yeah. All right, later, Kenny. All right, I'll see you later. Um, this is Monday through Friday. Ah, so then. I got the number right now. Got a full day. I was alive. I tried calling them last night. <laughs> when I got locked out. <laughs> Hello. Hello. But y'all should have this page with an hour to set. Oh, there they are. So Monday through Thursday, 8 to 7, and Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday. It was Tuesday, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so calm when I got out of work. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, for Jennifer, you asked when your test is done, you need to upload the paperwork and you do. Um, yes, yes. So you won't email it to me though, you will upload it. So you can email it to yourself and then put it on your computer, save it to your computer. And then when you go to upload, you just find it where you left it on your computer. So you save it to the desktop. When you go to upload it, you just click your desktop and you find your file. But you cannot email it to me. Don't email it to me. Don't text it to me. It has to be uploaded. Hello, can you can hear me, me now? Me? Yes. Uh, well, I wanted to remind I don't you. I think that she can. I am having. I can hear you. Kids. Yeah, I can another hear you baby. Too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's well, congratulations. Thank you. It, but it's actually soon. Like we're expecting probably. I think it was like the fifth. Latest of February. So, what? Y'all yeah. have been pregnant this whole time. Yeah, I, I oh my goodness. You know, I, I could have swore I, I I told you last semester, but I I guess I didn't even tell Jillian. Yeah. I, Jillian didn't know either. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um I just I don't know when it's like we're just like, like waiting now, but um I mean, might not be here like a couple. Do you know the boy or another boy? Another, another two. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, congratulations. But yeah, soon it heads up that I might not be here. Some we'll see what happens when we get to around that time, okay. and then what I need to move. Okay. Thank you for letting me know.
Have a good uh, day. Yeah, thank you. You too. Okay, guys, if you have any more questions, try to put in the chat. I'm going to keep messing around with my mic to see. Wait, can you hear me? Yes, I did answer your question. You are in section 15, but the um, canvas show, I mesh, I melded them, I merged them all together. And the one that I put them into was section 18. So it says section 18, no matter what section you enroll, they all say in section 18. Okay. I kind of took section 18 since that was the online class and I put section 14 in there and I put section 15 in there. So you are in section 15, you are remote, but um, but when you go to Canvas, it says section 18. Yes, anything that says section 18 only, don't worry about it. <laughs> it doesn't apply to you. But you do have a week one module. So whatever you see in that week one module, anything that was for the online students will be blinded for you. So you won't be able to see the stuff that I have specifically for the online people. When I pull up Canvas on the screen, you can see everything, but um, you won't be able to see on your end the stuff just for the online students. I promise I will figure out this technical situation. Um, if I don't get to figure it out, because there's another class coming in here. But if I don't get to figure it out today, it will be figured out before next Tuesday's time. Have a good day, too. Someone come off of me and try to talk to Carlos, are you there? Yes, when you take the readiness exam, um, write down whatever you need to write down. And then um, that's what you will use to upload. Okay? But write something for each problem, even if it's just the answer. Um, but can you try to come up with me for me real quick and say something so I can see if my speaker? Can you hear me? Yay, yes, I fixed it. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were trying to talk to you. And uh, I was like, probably only that, you know, we're not supposed to be heard. No, um, no, you I'm are. Just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I have a I'll have a camera next time that you know we're in class. I just didn't have it this time. No problem. Um, but uh, yeah, when you said uh, that we were supposed to scan and then send it or mm -hmm. upload it, um, where are we supposed to upload? Um, okay, so let me let me go there. Um, if I go to your class, when you take the readiness quiz, yeah, here. When mm -hmm. you're in there, and as soon as you hit submit, mm -hmm. um, there's a button down here to next. And notice how it says this is where you practice uploading the paperwork. Oh, okay, okay, so okay. Just click that next button, and then this is where now for you on your end, it's probably on the right hand side. It says submit assignment, mm -hmm. and you'll click that button, and mm -hmm. then it'll ask you to upload it on your page to like browse for your file. Okay. All right, um, let me see. And then the, the homework, because I noticed that there's a 5.1, 5.2, 5 and 3, um, I guess, assignments. Yes. Uh, would that be? Um, yeah. Video. All going to be due Friday, but I'm going to put the videos in here. I didn't quite get to put them in there yet, but I'm going to put them in there like as soon as I get back to my office. But is this going to be due through uh, whatever online, um, what do you call it? Uh, the it's called web assign is that is that what it is yes so when you click on these it takes you to web assign to web assign but we have to create an account and everything for that right right you're gonna have to follow the steps yeah. on this page so Sounds that you good. can do everything correct when you click this 
Okay. What I would suggest, I'm glad you asked, uh -huh. and I forgot to mention it, um, is what I would do is I would go back, actually, and I would right click on here and open it in a new tab, mm -hmm. and then click on this, so that you and can, that, so you can it, see like, side by side, yeah. Okay. That way you can right. follow the steps and, and see them at the same time. All right, that's good to know. Uh, and for our homework, uh, do we also have to upload any kind of uh, like like problem solving that we did? Good question. No, the only time you have to upload your paperwork is when you're taking the test. Oh, uh, just a test. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you when you're working on homework and you have questions, I always tell people to text me and send me a picture of the problem, and um, just you know snap a picture with your phone, and then uh, take a picture of anything that you've done on paper so far. So I can kind of figure out where you are and how to help you from there. Okay. Um, I have something called a, a rocket book or something like that, where like, uh -huh. I don't even have to take like a scanner or anything, but I just, uh, well, it kind of scans it, but it yes. just puts it like in a white background or something like okay. that. Uh, uh, and I was, you do. Yeah. I, I just feel like I organize myself a lot better. Yeah. Um, so well, if we, do, mm -hmm. if we do that, that would that be okay. All right. Yeah, um, perfect. And let me see, I had one thing I wanted to ask you. Because, uh, like I said, we were trying to talk, and and, and then no. uh, there was a question that, I, let me see. Um, It was on the, so I'm, I'm guessing we do that homework after we watch the videos, right? Or are we going to go yes, over yes. anything on Thursday? We will, I will kind of like answer questions. So you'll watch the videos, but then if anybody has any extra questions or there's something uh -huh. I like really want to point out, then uh -huh. I will, I will talk about those before we start working on our, on our problems. Okay. All right. Then. Uh, so I guess we just got to get to work on creating the account and taking the test, right? Pretty much for now. Yeah. The little practice test. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. then. Well, okay. thank you. Thank you. for. <laughs> You're welcome. You have a good day. Uh, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.